Island Hafner, top producing realtor at ERA Key Realty in Central Massachusetts. Today, we're gonna talk about first time home buyers. How much of a down payment will you need to buy your first house? some of my other videos. I answered 13 questions for first home, home buyers in some of my previous videos. Today, even though I've already talked a little bit about down payment, we're gonna get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty about how much money you actually will need to put down on a, home, a house. As you can see behind me, I have 20% crossed out. And the reason I do that is because I think a lot of home buyers have that misconception that they need 20% down in order to buy a house. And that's not true. Why some people say that is because if you don't have the 20% down, then you might have to instead pay private mortgage insurance. And really, if you have 20% down, you wouldn't need to pay that private mortgage insurance. But I mean, the private mortgage insurance is not that much of a waste of money when you consider the fact that you're wasting your money, you know, on rent, it's either you waste, you know, 100 to 150 a month on private mortgage insurance or, you know, 1500 a month on rent. So, you know, it, to me, it, it makes more sense to just, if you don't have 20%, just pay the private mortgage ins insurance and then you can get yourself into a house. As a first time home buyer, you have available to you a lot of different loan programs. Now, absolutely ask lenders what their first time home buyer programs are right here on the bottom, because those might be the most helpful to you. But I'm gonna go over the traditional loans and how much money you need for those. You can see on the board behind me, um, conventional, if you have a 620 or above, credit score, you can qualify to only put 3% down. And then of course, these, these all of these scenarios are, are talking about private mortgage insurance. The only way you get out of private mortgage insurance is to have the 20% down. But in the conventional loan, when you get to that 20%, you actually can, they will eliminate the PMI. In FHA, you would have to refinance to get rid of the PMI just kind of a, a good thing to note. But anyway, as I was saying here, so conventional 620 and above, 3% down. FHA is uh, 580 and above to have 3.5% down. And then VA loans and USDA loans, yes, you actually can put down 0%. But let me talk about that a little bit more. What I wanna say about USDA and VA loan is that if you talk to a lender, they will say if you want to put 0% down and you find a home that is in a rural enough area, then a USDA loan could be a possibility. And yes, that is true. Um, and it, you'd have to check with, with them as to which towns qualify, which towns do not. Um, and then also, if you're a veteran, you have can qualify for a veteran's loan, which also means that the lenders only require zero down, which is it sounds wonderful, but let me tell you something. That is from a lender's standpoint. If you talk to a realtor, like myself, we will tell you it sounds all well and good to put 0% down, but I work with sellers and I work for buyers. And what I can tell you is that as a seller agent, I do not recommend my sellers to always accept 0% down from a buyer because they have no skin in the game. So that's something that you want to take into consideration. Yes, the lender will allow it, but will the seller of the house that you want allow it? That is not always going to be in your favor. So please keep that in mind when you start your house hunting. One way around this whole 0% down thing, what I've had a couple of my buyers do in the past is say they had a veteran's loan, okay? What they do is, they put down a thousand dollars with the offer still, and they put down, you know, like three or four grand, maybe depending on the purchase price, on um, 
at the purchase and sale agreement, which comes two weeks later. They will do this, but then what happens is at closing, the veterans loan will give that money back to them. But it, it, it serves two purposes. One, maybe you could get a gift from a family member for that amount of money if you don't have it which would be great and then you can give it back to them at closing which i've seen that scenario happen but it also satisfies the sellers because sellers want to make sure that you have you know some investment in their property they don't want to sell their home to you if you aren't going to be willing to put money down when they have three or four other offers and those people are willing to put money down. So these are things you all want to consider. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that sometimes you need to get a little creative with it. And that's the benefit of working with both a realtor and a lender. They can both advise you on what the best route is depending on the situation. I'm not in the habit of recommending Zillow to people because I do feel like Zillow gives a lot of misconceptions and not very accurate data to people. It, it's a guideline, but it's definitely not accurate. So I don't suggest using it often. However, in this situation, if you go to Zillow Mortgage to the app, that's at least on the iPhone, I don't know, you might be able to find it um, online. It can be a very valuable resource. Now granted, you can use any app out there, but I'm gonna show you what Zillow app can, can kind of, what kind of info they can give you as far as how much money you would need down and how it's going to affect your payment and things like that. So here we are in the Zillow Mortgage app. I'm at the monthly payment calculator. I'm starting with on the upper right, look at the screen at 250 price with a down payment of 3%. So this is with the conventional loan at 3% and an interest rate of 3.125% on the right hand side. Now over to the left, you'll see the payment is 1538 per month and it breaks down the numbers for you. Now I'm going to put my finger on this interest rate and I'm going to slide it upward to a higher interest rate of 3.750. Do you see how on the left your payment went to 1622 per month? Okay, you can it's so easy to fool around with this app and really will help you understand your numbers a little better. So now let's up the price a little. We're at 250. I'm going to go up. I as you can see I went up to 290 and my payment at the 3.75 interest rate is now at 1871. So this is a great app to play around with, change the down payment numbers, change the interest rate. This will give you a much better understanding of what you're looking for financially when you first buy your first home. It's a great, great tool. If you don't like this one, there are plenty of others for you to check out. I just want to give you a little bit of an example of the difference in down payments. Uh, of what's needed between the conventional and the FHA. So for example, say your first home is gonna be 300,000. On the board behind me, you can see, you would need 9,000 cash down if you had a conventional loan, and yet you would need 10,500 down for an FHA loan. Whereas if you moved the purchase price down to 280, then you're looking at needing only 8,400 down on a conventional loan, but 9,800 down for an FHA loan. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of an example in, in numbers. These numbers give you an idea that if you're not quite ready yet, tuck away money, start saving, it won't take you long. If you wanna ask someone for a gift letter, I highly recommend you doing that just to get you into a good home as soon as possible, especially if you can take advantage of low interest rates because the lower the interest rate, definitely the more house you can afford. And that, as a first time home buyer, you definitely want to take advantage of that. That's why right now is such a great time to buy because the interest rates are crazy low. I know it's not always gonna be that way, but right now it is. So a lot of things to think about, but as far as the down payment goes, you know, that should be the easy part. The rest of it is just ch double checking, making sure your credit score is good, making sure your loan to income rate ratio isn't too high and the rest will work out. And if you're looking for a home in 
Worcester County in Central Mass, I would love for you to reach out to me, 508-942-7923. I love helping first timers find an awesome home, so let me help you if I can. Thanks, have a great day.